This video is a part of the Periodic Trends series, and it is going to focus on shielding effect. So consider what the term shield means. A shield, shown here in this picture with the warrior, is used as a form of protection. So you can think about the shielding effect in the same way. When it comes to periodic trends, the shielding effect is the decrease of attraction between the positively charged nucleus and the valence electrons, also known as the outer electrons, due to the increase in the number of inner energy levels. The inner energy levels are where the core electrons are located. The core is shown here and represented by the first energy level and the second energy level. So any electrons on those first two energy levels are considered part of the core electrons. With shielding effect, what's happening is the outer electrons, I'll draw them in green, the outer electrons that would be on the outermost energy levels, the valence electrons, that would be a valence electron. They are shielded from the nucleus, from the positive attractive force of the nucleus. They're shielded by the core electrons. So the more core electrons there are, the greater the shielding effect for that atom. Let's take a look at this trend as we move left to right across a period. It says here, when we go left to right, shielding effect stays the same, it doesn't change. So let's examine why. If you take a look at this picture and examine elements in the same period. So let's take period two, for example. If we look at period two and go left to right across the period, you can see that the shield stays the same. And remember the shield are the core electrons. So for lithium, which is the first element in period two, lithium only has one energy level with core electrons on it. If we stay in the same period and just jump over to group 14 or group 4A, carbon also has just one inner energy level. So does fluorine and so does neon. These elements are all in the same period. That means they have a total of two energy levels. And the inner energy level, the first energy level, which is the one I marked with my green pen, that represents the core electrons. So as long as the core electrons remain the same across the period, the shielding effect does not change. And Remember, when you stay in the same period, the number of energy levels does not change for an element. Now let's take a look at what happens to shielding effect when we move down a group. It says that shielding effect increases when we move down a group. So why is that the case? Let's examine this picture again. If you select group one, and look at the elements that occupy this group, go down the group, you'll notice that the size of the atom increases. So if the size of the atom is increasing due to the added energy levels, you can see that the shield is also increasing. Every time you go down to a new period, a new energy level is added. So period two has a total of two energy levels. Period three has a total of three energy levels. And you can see that the core electrons are pictured on the innermost energy level. So while period one has no core electrons, period two actually has an energy level with two electrons on it, two core electrons. And then period three with sodium has two core energy levels with electrons on it. So the core is pictured 
in gray, the core energy levels. So as you move down a group, the core number of electrons increases. So the shielding effect also increases. Let's look at some practice problems. Remember, when we go down a group, shielding effect increases. Left to right, it stays the same. Which element has more shielding, sodium or cesium? So let's find them on the periodic table. Here's sodium and here is cesium. You can see that cesium being in the larger numbered period has the greatest shielding effect. Cesium is in period six, so that means it has six energy levels, while sodium is in period three, which means it only has three energy levels. So as we move down a group, the core number of electrons increases and cesium has six energy levels, so it has a larger shield. Our next example asks about carbon and oxygen. So let's find them on the periodic table. Here's carbon highlighted in red and here's oxygen. So which one has the greater shielding? Hopefully you remembered that these elements are in the same period. They're both period two elements. That means they both have two energy levels. So their shielding effect is actually the same. They are the same. They have the same number of core electrons. Now let's take a look at these elements listed and place them in order of increasing shielding. So let's take a minute to make sure we understand what that means. Increasing shielding means we're starting with the element with the lowest shielding effect and going to the highest. So lowest to highest, that's increasing shielding. So let's find these elements on the periodic table. Chlorine, iodine, fluorine, bromine, and astatine. So I'll take my yellow highlighter here and mark where those are. Hopefully you notice that these are all halogens. So I'm gonna highlight the halogens here. And let's determine which one has the lowest shielding. Hopefully you notice that fluorine is in the lowest numbered period. So fluorine, because it only has two energy levels, has the smallest shield. So fluorine would be our first element listed here, going in increasing order, followed by what's next on the list, chlorine. So we've eliminated fluorine and chlorine. Next, we have bromine. So fluorine has two energy levels, chlorine has three, bromine has four, iodine is next. And finally, we have astatine, which has a total of six energy levels. So to sum up, as we go down a group, shielding effect increases. Left to right, it stays the same.